Um, good afternoon, everyone. So I am Ara, and um, I will be presenting this um, newly uh, accepted uh, NIPS paper um, entitled Efficient Visual Transformers with um, Small Size Data Set. So I will only be um, um, uh, explaining the high-level concepts, and I'll try my best to make it um, as simple as possible for, uh, for all of us to uh, understand. So um, anyway, uh, let's proceed. So um, are you, I think, are you familiar with this paper? Um, this came out last year. Um, it's entitled an image is worth uh, 16 by 16 words, transformers for image recognition at scale. So um, if, you're uh, if you're familiar with ICML, um, I was following uh, their, um, their review process last March. And um, there are a lot of tweets regarding um, regarding the submitted papers, like the reviewers are saying that oh, um, there are so many submitted uh, VIP papers with attention is all you need in the title. So um, it drew the hype because um, the paper is the first one to show that uh, a pure transformer, which has been very popular with uh, NLP tasks, beat the state-of-the-art CNN in image recognition for the first time. So um, CNN has been very uh, much successful and the dominating model with vision tasks. But um, based on the paper, um, VIT models outperform um, the current state of the art CNN by almost four times four in, uh, in terms of computational efficiency and accuracy. So, but uh, the question is how did, uh, how did VIT do that? Or how did it beat CNN? Or another question is that uh, magiging extinct na ba yung CNN after nito? So, but first, let us examine first um, how different it is from CNN. So, for a start, um, let's see how CNNs work. So, um, we know that CNNs um, work locally. So, it uses kernels. It uses kernels where it convolves to nearby pixels and extract features of local blocks. So, it aggregates local of uh, local information or uh, features in each layer, um, which is then passed to the next layer uh, that thus again aggregates local information, but now again with a larger field of view because it looks at the information that was already aggregated by uh, the first layer. So the key takeaway here is that um, the receptive field uh, of um, CNN becomes more global uh, in each layer and after quite some training time. So um, VIT, on the other hand, um, overcomes this limitation of CNN. So um, VIT succeeds at um, having a large receptive view, uh, recep receptive field of view from the very beginning. So we know that uh, VIT is, uh, I know transformers is a de facto standard in NLP. And in NLP problems, the input is um, a sequence of words, right? So how, how can we apply this idea in uh, vision, in computer vision problems? So uh, to do this, what the transformer does is um, look at the input image by taking, um, by uh, split, taking this input image and splitting it into um, non-overlapping patches, okay? Um, uh, in this paper, what they did is um, uh, it's a patch of 16 by 16 pixels. So then this, uh, this uh, grid of patches is then flattened, uh, flattened by a linear, uh, flattened by uh, a linear transformation, a matrix so that they, 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 can, they become vectors. So then um, each of this vector, each of the vector, um, each of the vector gets a learnable na positional embeddings, uh, which corresponds to, um, to where a patch is sourced or located so that the transformer knows the order or the, or the, sequ or the sequence of the patches. So for example, itong um, unang patch na ito, unang patch na ito, um, it corresponds to um, this na patch na embedding. So it will, the transformer will know that the sequence of, um, of the patches in the images, like, how uh, like how the NLP processes the uh, sequence of words or or um, sentences, right? So, and then um, the, because the transformer um, receives 
um, dispatches and it computes for each pixel's attention score on every other pixel, it is able to capture global or um, long range dependencies in the image. So lastly, um, the MLP head uh, is then used to predict what the image might represent. Okay, so, all right, so now, but still, why does it do better than uh, the CNNs? Um, actually, VIP, uh, the increased na representation capacity of the VIP comes with a price. So VIP can be data hungry. So actually, the experiments involved uh, in this paper uh, involved training a larger amount of data than what is necessary for a standard CNNs. In fact, um, VIP is worse than ResNet when trained uh, just on ImageNet. So, but it, their performance improved when pre-trained on big data set. So big is because um, they have, uh, according to the paper, they have used um, JFT 300, uh, which contains 300 million, uh, 300 million weekly labeled na, uh, weekly labeled na images. So when they did that, they uh, when they did the pre-training, uh, the models have outperformed much bigger in CNNs. Okay, so um, what happens is that the VIP can be um, unfocused at first, and it needs a huge data amounts to learn how to focus and uh, what to focus its attention on to make the right predictions. So on many amounts of data, um, the transformer can find very original and unexpected ways to look at the data because um, there is no element in the architecture that tells the model how exactly to do that. Uh, the CNNs, on the other hand, is focused from the very beginning to look at the local view. So the given focus patterns um, can be a limitation, but can also spare a lot of training data on this because we do not have to teach the model how to focus only on what to focus. So um, there are many critics that, um, that have pointed this out, um, especially that uh, when the paper came out, um, it is on a blind review and tapos hindi alam kung sino kung na yung authors. Eh, um, eh yung nag-pre-training sila on JFT 300. So, who's sino normal researcher who can have um, access to a very, very large na um, GPU na resources? So, uh, it could be <laughs> Google lang naman siguro. Anyway, so, uh, in order to alleviate this problem, um, very recently, a second generation of VPs has been independently proposed by different groups. So um, a common idea behind these works is to uh, mix convolutional layers with attention layers. So in such a way that we are providing a local in inductive bias to the vision transformer. So this hybrid architectures um, enjoy the advantages of both the paradigms. So um, the convolutional um, operations can emphasize the local properties of the image content. And the attention layers, on the other hand, uh, can model long range or um, capture global, uh, model long range dependencies or capture global information in the image. So however, um, it is still not clear what the behavior of these networks are when trained on medium, small size na data sets. So this is what the paper wanted to do. So what uh, they did is to compare um, different uh, second generation vision transformers by either training them from scratch or fine tuning them on medium, small size na data sets. So um, they, simply, uh, they simply used um, already uh, already implemented the vision transformers. Okay, so moreover, um, to accelerate training in a small training set or a few epochs in a regime, so they have proposed an additional self-supervised pretext test and a corresponding loss function in um, corresponding loss function. So specifically, um, the proposed task is based on learning um, the spatial relationships between um, the output token embeddings. So um, here's the general overview of the method that they have uh, that ha that was proposed in the paper. It is composed of two parts. So the first part is the VIP, the general uh, the VIP, and then the other one is the uh, the 
the new method that we have proposed is the self-supervised pretext na task. Okay, so um, let us quickly discuss the hybrid CNN VT architecture first. Okay, so, so here the paper shows how to uh, embed CNN in the VT architecture. So one example that um, that may be to you uh, that can that may be used is uh, using CNN as a patch extractor. So um, what they do is when an image is because um, um, if you remember in the original VIT, um, they simply divide this image this image into non-overlapping patches. But in here, um, some some papers have used um, CNN as a patch extractor. So uh, when an image is given as input to a CNN through convolutional layers, it is transformed from being a three-channel RGB to an n-channel image. At the same time, its size is drastically reduced and the content of the image itself is uh, transformed. Also, um, the features that have been uh, extracted from the convolutional network simplify the training of the feature vision transformer as the CNN features already embed important low level and localized information in the image. So, and then um, some other papers naman do not use CNN as a patch extractor. So they follow the original VIT where they just divide the image into non-overlapping patches. However, what they do is they um, usually shape or reshape the sequence of this um, token embeddings um, in a spatial grid such that uh, they are able to apply convolutional operations over a small set of neighboring token uh, embeddings. So then uh, you can use, uh, as you can see, you can use non-overlapping patches or convolutions in uh, the spatial the grid. So instead of uh, the VIP where each can, um, which you pass this as a whole and it computes the, um, it computes the attention on all of the patches, it can look at just the, let's say the local na attention in each of the um, this convolved na, um, na this convolved na layers. Okay, so um, after that, um, this grid of possibly overlapping k by k patches is then passed to um, is then projected in the input embedding space, and which is then fed to the VIT. Okay, so now after doing such, we have the final uh, embedding, uh, final k by k grid of embeddings, right? So this represents the input of image and it's uh, used for the discriminative na task. So for instance, um, so some methods include an additional class token which um, collects context contextual information over the whole grid. And while the other that do not use this, uh, this one, so they apply an average uh, global pooling over the final grid to get a compact representation over the whole image. So when they use um, a convolution, let's say a stride greater than one and are pooling uh, operations, they can also reduce the, uh, the uh, resolution of the token grid, which makes it um, uh, more, more efficient. Okay, so finally, um, a, a standard small M MLP takes as input the whole image na, uh, representation and it outputs a posterior na distribution over the set of target classes. So um, the VT or the vision transformer is trained using standard entropy loss, which is computed using these posteriors and the image ground truth na labels. So now we are done discussing the, the first part. So now let's move on to the second na, uh, part, which uh, they have proposed also, which is the self-supervised pretext task. Okay, so before that, let us quickly um, go back to self-supervised -super, self learning. So we know that in supervised learning tasks, it's, it usually requires um, a huge amount of annotated data, right? So um, uh, that is usually hard and um, expensive to label. So for instance, in uh, medical data sets, so uh, the data is scarce and also very difficult to obtain. So one solution that has been um, proposed and studied in the past is the use of self-supervised learning. So we're in 
uh, in this uh, in this in this model, uh, the data it's the data that provides uh, the supervision. So what it does is um, it leverages the uh, non-labeled data and learn key uh, learn key visual and um, feature in the representations. So this learned in the representations may now be um, transferred to uh, to our target the task. Okay. So and then we can achieve this with um, a very few labeled data because we have already learned um, good representations from the self-supervised learning stage. So the author of this paper that I am uh, that I am discussing have drawn inspiration from this advantage of um, self-supervised um, pretext na task. So what the authors uh, did is to um, encourage the VT, the vision transformer, to learn spatial information without using uh, additional manual annotations. Okay, so earlier we have discussed that um, in v, that in the original transformer in VIT, so an absolute na positional embedding uh, is added to the representation of the input tokens. Right, so if you remember that earlier, so in transformer networks. Positional embedding is used to provide information about the token order. Um, but um, for those VT without positional embeddings, so what they do is to uh, apply an average the global pooling over the final grid to get a compact representation of, um, of the whole image. So from this uh, final embedding grid, um, they densely sample um, multiple embedding pairs for each image, and uh, they ask the network or the MLP to guess their relative na positions. So, so that for um, uh, for a single image forward, uh, we can compare to each other many embedding pairs and average the localization loss over all of them. So now the question is, how can they integrate this? How can how did they integrate this to the original VT architecture or the existing VT architectures? So um, to incorporate the self-supervised pretest task, the localization loss earlier, uh, the localization loss that we have discussed there, um, of what is termed as the dense relative localization loss because it's densely sampled, or um, the L sub DR lock, is added to the standard na cross entropy loss so of each native na VT. so this dense na relative localization loss then acts like a regularizer that helps the vt learn spatial information without using additional na information okay so okay so let's see or let's proceed to the experiment now so um so we tested they tested this proposed na approach in three existing na hybrid na CNN VIT na models. So um, if you want to know more information about each of this, just refer to the um, the implemented na, na implemented na, um, architectures below. So um, they used SWIN, T2T, and then the CVT. And then they chose um, those baselines that are comparable size to ResNet 50 with uh, like 25 million parameters and um, they did not change the VT architecture. They just plug in the loss and um, this they only uh, they only this is the only addition. So they not change they did not change the native na VT na architecture. Okay, so um, they tested it on these data sets: um, ImageNet, Far10, Cifar100. Oxford Flower, CVHN, and also um, six um, subsets of um, domain net. Okay, so they done the training. They have done the training with uh, both with with and also without the localization loss. So they compared their accuracy with and without, and also um, they have used the same uh, data augmentation protocol for all the models and. Um, the hyperparameter in a configuration is specific to um, to the VT that they have um, that they are they are using. So now for the results. So they analyzed the performance of both 
the VT baselines and their regularization loss using small medium uh, size data sets and also the number of training epochs. So let's see here first. So they tested um, first, we have tested uh, LDR log or the, their proposed na, na, um, regularization loss okay um with different na embedding pairs different number of uh, pair samples so they have seen that um, the 64 is uh the 64 embedding pairs is the most na optimized however they have discussed in their paper that they are not sure why is it that um why is it that um that increasing the number of pairs is um, is redu uh, nag reduce na yung accuracy niya. So it's part of their limitations. Okay, so and then also, um, this part naman is the results on the on in 100, on the data set in 100 with different number of training epochs. Okay, so um, they have shown that uh, they, when they plug in their regularization loss, um, it is better than the baseline or without the regularization loss okay and also um, this boost is especially larger with fewer epochs so 100 epochs divided by the 300 na epochs so as expected the loss acts like um a reg reg regular regularizer whose effects are more pronounced in a shorter training na regime so they believe that uh, this result is particularly significant considering the larger computational times which are necessary to train typical VTs with respect to ResNets. So, and then this result naman is they have um, used all the data sets, uh, all the data sets and uh, which, is, which are trained from scratch with 100 na epochs. Okay, so First, they note that the accuracy of the VT baselines um, varies depending on the data set, uh, which is ex expected, but also depending on the specific na, uh, VT na architecture. So we can see that um, we can see that in SWIN there are there are super large or dramatic na increases in uh, the accuracy. So, like for example, in here in the quick draw from 24.08 naging 69.41 just so there are like 45.33 increase and also in some other uh, data sets like sketch 26.58 uh in svhn it's 22.63 cifar 10 24.42 so there are dramatic increases in swin okay so um as but we should note that um, so Sweden marrying dramatic increases, but even CVT and T2T have also um, have also improved their accuracies when the regularization loss was integrated to the original na uh, to the native na VT na architecture. So um, this may be because that um, the Swin has um, positional embeddings as compared to other architectures like CVT and as well as the T2T. So, and also um, another notable na, um, another notable observation is that um, the CVT is much more um, robust in small training regime with respect to the other two na VT. So for instance, in CIFAR 10, it's like 90.30, um, pero sa SWIN 83.89 and then the T2T is only 87.89. Uh, 56 um, same as same is true for um, all of the data sets okay so but but what is important is that the improvements have been seen across all of VT architectures and all of the data sets so um, they believe that these results are are particularly interesting especially for those tasks in which um, fine-tuning a model pre-trained on large data sets is not possible. So this is the case, for instance, where uh, when there is a large domain shift with respect to the application data sets, like let's say we have uh, medical images, or when the VT architecture should be um, drastically modified and adapted to the specific task. Okay, so now 
their next experiment, uh, so note lang ha, um, this first experiment are trained from scratch. And this one naman is with free training. So they analyze a typical na fine-tuning scenario in which a model is pre-trained on a big data set and then uh, like ImageNet and then fine-tuned on the target domain. So specifically in all of their experiments, they have used BT models pre-trained by the corresponding na BT authors on ImageNet 1K without their localization loss. Okay, so um, they have seen that um, also, similarly, if, uh, both in SWIN and P2P, all of uh, the archit all of the hybrid CNN VT architectures, as well as well as well as all of the data sets, have um, improved their um, accurate classification accuracy. So, uh, so in conclusion, so they have um, their proposed na um, proposed na uh, method actually work and um, have been very um, successful for small to medium size data sets. But uh, the VT performance um, largely varies when trained from scratch uh, with small, medium, uh, small, medium size data sets. And also uh, they have from their experiments, they have seen that the CVT is usually much more effective in generalizing uh, less data. And also um, their proposed localization loss has always uh, improved the corresponding baseline accuracy. And it's very easy to reproduce because um, they, uh, because they, you, uh, you don't have to change the native VT na architecture, but, um, and you just have to plug in the loss. So it's very effective tool, and a very effective tool to boost the performance of VTs, especially in training regimes with limited amount of data or training time. So um, that's all. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Um.